Solve the following assignment problem by using Hungarian method. The matrix in trees represents the time in hours needed by operators 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 to complete jobs A, B, C, and D. The problem will help us to see the application of diagonal rule for solving assignment problems, which can be solved by using the noun row scanning and column scanning techniques. Before going to the steps of Hungarian method, we have to make sure that whether the model is balanced or not. In the given cost matrix, the number of rows are 4 and the number of columns are 5. In other words, the given model is unbalanced assignment model. Thus, before proceeding to the steps of Hungarian method, the model has to be balanced by adding a dummy row with zero entries. A decision to add whether a dummy row or a dummy column depends on the number of rows and the number of columns in a given matrix. A dummy is added to the one which is less in number, meaning if the number of rows is less than the number of columns, a dummy row has to be added. On the other hand, if the number of columns is less than the number of rows, a dummy column has to be added. The number of dummy row or dummy column to be added is equal to the number by which that row or column is less because the intention is to restore balance between the number of rows and the number of columns. In this particular case, the number of rows is less than the number of columns by one. Hence, we have to add one row with zero values and let's name that row JE. Now the model is balanced, so we can continue to the steps of Hungarian method. Step one, row reduction and column reduction. Reduce the initial matrix by subtracting the smallest element in each row from every element in that row. For such reduction, let's identify the smallest element in each row. The smallest element in row 1 is 10. The smallest element in row 2 is 8. Row 3 minimum is 7. Row 4 minimum is 11. And row 5 minimum is 0. Before continuing to calculate row reduction, let's copy a blank table at this right-hand side for the row reduced entries. In subtracting row 1 minimum from every element in row 1, 10 minus 10 is equal to 0, 12 minus 10 is equal to 2, 11 minus 10 is equal to 1, 10 minus 10 is equal to 0, and 11 minus 10 is equal to 1. In row 2, 8 minus 8 is equal to 0, 14 minus 8 is equal to 6, 9 minus 8 is equal to 1, 12 minus 8 is equal to 4, and 15 minus 8 is equal to 7. In row 3, 7 minus 7 is equal to 0, 7 minus 7 again equal to 0, 10 minus 7 is equal to 3, 12 minus 7 equal to 5. 11 minus 7 is equal to 4. In row 4, 13 minus 11 is equal to 2. 11 minus 11 equal to 0. 12 minus 11 equal to 1. 13 minus 11 is equal to 2. And 14 minus 11 is equal to 3. The row 5 values will not be changing because row 5 minimum is 0 and his subtracting 0 will not change the values. So we can copy them as they are. Since we balance the model by adding a dummy row with 0 entries, no need for column and reduction calculation. Because the minimum value in every column is 0, and his deducting 0 will net change the values. So let's directly close it to step 2, that's row scanning and column scanning. In this step, we will find the minimum number of straight lines that must be drawn through the rows and columns of the current matrix, so that all the zeros in the matrix will be covered. In drawing these lines, we will start from row scanning and then continue to column scanning. In the row scanning step, examine the rows of radius matrix successively, and whenever a row with single zero is found, Enclose that zero with a rectangle and eliminate a column containing that zero by drawing a vertical line through it. Skip the row containing no zero or more than one zero. You have to skip row one because it contains more than one zero. Row two contains only one zero, that's the zero under column one. So we will enclose this zero in rectangle and eliminate column one by drawing a vertical line through it. The only unlined zero in row three is the one under column two. So we will enclose it in rectangle and delete column 2 by drawing a vertical line through it. Row 4 has no active 0 and row 5 has 3 zeros. So we will skip them and continue to column scanning. Following row scanning, examine each unlined column successively. And whenever a column with single 0 is found, enclose that 0 with rectangle and eliminate a row containing it by drawing a horizontal line through it. Skip the lined columns and the unlined columns containing no 0 or more than 1 0. Column 1 and column 2 are already deleted, so we have to skip them. We can enclose the only unlined 0 of column 3 in rectangle and delete row 5 by drawing a horizontal line through it. Column 4 also contains only one unlined 0, so we will enclose this 0 in rectangle and delete row 1 by drawing a horizontal line through it. At this stage, all the zeros in the matrix are covered by straight lines, so let's cast forward to the requirements that specify what should be the next. If the number of straight lines drawn to cover the zeros is equal to the number of rows, the solution is optimal, since an optimal assignment following the zeros inside the rectangle can be made. If the number of lines drawn to cover the zeros is less than the number of rows, 
the solution is not optimal and he's go to step three number of rows in the matrix equal to five number of straight line drawn to cover the zeros equal to four that's two vertical lines and two horizontal lines since the number of straight lines drawn to cover the zeros is less than the number of rows so we have to proceed to step three step three identify the smallest unlined element subtract this smallest element from every unlined element and add it to every element at the intersection of two lines. Elements covered by a single line will remain the same or they will be copied to the next table as they are. Again, let's copy a blank table at this right hand side in order to fit the new entries. First, let's copy element covered by a single line. That's 1, 0 and 1 in row 1, 0 and 6 in row 2, these two zeros in row 3, 2 and 0 in row 4, and these three zeros in row five has to be copied to the next table as they are because they are covered by a single line. The smallest unlined element is one. So we have to subtract this smallest unlined element from every unlined element. That's one minus one is equal to zero. Four minus one is equal to three. Seven minus one is equal to six. Three minus one is equal to two. Five minus one is equal to four. Four minus one is equal to three. One minus one is equal to zero. Two minus one is equal to one. And three minus one is equal to two. On the other hand, we have to add this smallest unlined element to every element at the intersection of horizontal and vertical lines. The four straight lines intersect at these four points. So in adding one at these four points, we will find 0 plus 1 is equal to 1, 2 plus 1 is equal to 3, 0 plus 1 is equal to 1, and 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 again. We completed the operations of step 3. So let's return to step 2, that's the row and column and scanning step, in order to cover all the zeros by the minimum number of straight lines. The only zero in row one is the one under column and four. So we have to enclose this zero in rectangle and delete column and four by drawing a vertical line through it. The remaining four rows contain more than one zero. So we will skip them and continue to column and scanning. Column and one, column and two, and column and three each contains more than one zero. Since we will skip them. Also, we have to skip column and four because it's already deleted. The only zero of column and five is the one in row five. Thus, we can enclose this zero in rectangle and delete row five by drawing a horizontal line through it. Even if we make repeated row and column and scanning, we can't cover all the zeros by straight lines because each row and column where the zeros found contains more than one zero. Since the row and column and scanning process can't help us to reach an optimal solution, we have to put diagonal rule in place in order to determine the optimal assignment. Diagonal rule says that select zeros which are diagonally opposed to each other, enclose these zeros with a rectangle, and delete the columns contain these zeros by drawing a vertical line through them. If we choose the zero at the intersection of column one and row three, zeros diagonally opposed to this zero are the one at the intersection of row two and column three, or row four and column two. On the other hand, if we choose the zero at the intersection of column one and row two, we can choose the zero at the intersection of row three and column two as the diagonally opposite zero. This possible alternative stands as that we can have multiple assignments. If we make any one of these assignments, the optimal time will be the same. For this particular case, let's choose the letter one and delete column one and column two by drawing a vertical line through them. At this stage, only row four lacks the zero enclosed in rectangle. So we can enclose the only unlined zero of row four in rectangle and delete column three by drawing a vertical line through it. Since all the zeros are covered by straight line, let's check whether the number of straight lines drawn to cover the zeros is equal to the number of rows or not. Number of rows is equal to five. Number of straight lines drawn to cover zeros is equal to five. That's four vertical lines and one horizontal line. Since the number of straight lines drawn to cover the zeros is equal to the number of rows, the solution is optimal. Since optimal assignment following the zeros inside the rectangle can be made. For this assignment, let's draw a table containing seven rows and three columns and demonstrate operator, job, and time in row one. Operator one is assigned to job B. Operator one needs eight hours to complete job B. Operator 2 is assigned to job C. Operator 2 needs 7 hours to complete job C. Operator 3 is assigned to job D. Operator 3 needs 12 hours to complete job D. Operator 4 is assigned to job A. Operator 4 needs 10 hours to complete job A. Operator 5 is assigned to job E. Operator 5 needs 0 hours to complete job E. Total optimal time is equal to 8 plus 7 plus 12 plus 10 plus 0, which is equal to 37 hours. Operator 5 is assigned to a dummy job meaning it doesn't assign to any of the four jobs because this operator needs relatively more time to complete each job than other four operators. At last, let's check the correctness of the optimal set seven hours by using the formula. Optimal time is equal to the sum of row minimum plus the sum of column minimum plus the smallest element chosen in step three to add or subtract to other elements, which is equal to 
The sum of row minimums is 10 plus 8 plus 7 plus 11 plus all other minimums are all zero, so no need to add them. Plus the smallest element chosen is one. The sum of these numbers is equal to 37. Thus, the optimal time we determined is correct, and the assignment we made is truly optimal. By this, I wrap up this part. Goodbye.